We built a portable gaming PC that is focused on streaming and gaming using AMD's latest APU, the Ryzen 7 5700G. Did this little experiment end up the way we had hoped it would? Well, we're gonna find that out right now, right here on Robitech. On August 5th, in partnership with AMD, I had the opportunity to choose what I wanted to do for a build using AMD's Ryzen 7 5700G APU. Now, quick aside here, the Ryzen 7 5700G is AMD's latest APU built on their 5000 series Ryzen processors. Now, to be clear, this isn't the same as a Ryzen 5600X or a 5800X as it lacks PCIe Gen 4. There are some other differences as well, but what it does have that the other two chips don't have is the integrated graphics chip based on Vega graphics, not RDNA 2, that's important. Now, you know what else is integrated? Well, our logo in these super sweet 5950 caps that you can grab right now over at robitechstore.com. Now, the 5700G is an eight core, 16 thread APU with a max frequency of 4.6 gigahertz, similar to the 5600X. It's got 20 megs of L3 cache versus 32 on the 5600X, and it's got an eight CU GPU capable of 2000 megahertz, and it retails at $360 on Newegg as of the time of recording versus the 5600X, which was 289 at the time of recording. Now the APU is targeted at 1080p gaming and with what we have seen out of the 5000 series CPUs also capable of gaming and streaming at the same time. Now with all that aside, and now that you had a little bit of history lesson and you kind of understand what I'm going with, you can see that I kind of felt I had two options. Number one, I could build a compact gaming system that like an Xbox Series S could be something I could carry in like a backpack or a Pelican case along with like a key light, a wave microphone and like a stream deck and create a great 1080p 60 FPS portable streaming slash gaming system. Or I could build a silent gaming PC using Noctua's new passive cooler and knowing that I could cool the APU and game in silence. I don't need them. I chose the former though, because in the end, I really needed to know what this thing was capable of and if it could truly game. Now, at first I wanted to build something portable, but expandable. So I went with the Meshalicious case, given that if I had some point wanted to add a GPU to create something more powerful, then I was more than capable of being able to do so. However, now that the build's done, I kind of changed my mind. It's not that I'm unhappy with the case, but what I had is this idea of like a portable, something like akin to an Xbox Series S with my ultimate goal of being able to have like a single like Pelican case or backpack that you can travel with that gets you the ability to really stream on the go. I know you could do some of this with a laptop. Now I didn't want this thing to be massive and the hope is to have like a stream deck, a face cam, a 4K 60S plus, a Wave 1 and of course a PC that can both game and stream. So when I was watching Optimum Tech's review of the AMD Ryzen 5600G and learned that the Skyreach 4 Tiny and pairing that with like an HD Plex PSU, I was like, aha, and that, my friends, will be a future video. So let's go ahead and jump in the build real quick and do a recap of the build we did do, knowing that the goal is to build something ultra portable. Let's check it out. Huge shout out to AMD for sponsoring today's show. We are gonna be playing with uh, their new APU. This is GPU and CPU together. So we're using the ASUS ROG Strix B550i gaming. We got the Crucial Ballistic 3600 megahertz uh, DDR4. So we've got the two Crucial P5, one terabyte uh, NVMe SSDs. We're using the Noctua NH-L9A AM4. Uh, we're gonna be using these industrial uh, NF-A14s. We're actually gonna be using the Corsair SF600 watt. It's easy, it's light, it's portable. Meshalicious, which is like we're using the all mesh version of this case. You can actually, I can see you right now. Hi, hi guys. My wife said that I should do lunges to stay in shape. That would be a big step forward, just so you know. <laughs> I like using new tech on the show, so we get an opportunity to basically do this. There it is, the 5700G. Um, it doesn't look a whole lot different. And there we go, our brand new APU is actually installed. Putting in our M.2s. Next up, let's get our cooler on. Cooler time.
Let's go ahead and get this stripped down and let's continue our build. Look at that. Look at all those panels. Hi. You have all the room in the world. There we go. I didn't, I didn't want to forget. I was like, I'm going to have this out and put this out first. Okay, so let's grab our fans. So I'm going to remove this little bracket in here um, because we're going to be doing 140s instead of 120s, giving it lots of air. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there it is. So here's our PSU. Oh, and then by the way, guys, this does this, not, not the stinkiest, I would say, honestly. Okay, so now we're just gonna clean it up and make sure it looks good. Okay, let's uh, get the case back together. I'm assuming this is going to be very quiet. This just looks really nice. I think it came out super clean. Okay, here we go. Going to mood mode. There we go. There's our build. Turn it on. There it is. Well, there it is, a portable gaming streaming system, right? Well, the only way to really know what kind of power we have on our hands is to do the benchmarks, oh yeah. So here is how our AMD Ryzen 7 5700G, now remember, the graphics card is integrated, did in our barrage of game tasks. For Apex Legends, at low visual settings, aimed at competitive gameplay and visuals, we saw an average frame rate of 57.4 FPS not quite the 60 FPS mark we really wanted to hit. For Call of Duty Warzone, also at low visual settings, trying to make this as competitive as possible, we saw an average frame rate of 34.1 FPS. Again, well below the minimum target of 60 FPS. Now finally, for Fortnite, we also, testing at low visual settings and targeting at that competitive gameplay mark, we saw a nice and solid 181 FPS. So, it is possible to use like 120 or 144 hertz monitor here and have that high refresh rate needed for competitive shooting in Fortnite. But on the other two games, no, not really. 60, yeah. Finally, because it was asked a lot in chat and we were streaming the build, we did want to see how Minecraft might run and see if it might be a potential Minecraft portable system. Now setting everything to low and keeping the draw distance manageable, which means we didn't make it so it's like walk, chunk, walk, chunk, like you could actually see the world, we got it as high as 59.1 FPS in Minecraft. Now, if you are aiming to have 30 FPS, then you have some room to add some graphical features back in. If you are wanting that butter smooth 60 FPS experience, then just know that you're gonna be hitting some dips and bumps, even at low visual settings. So wrapping it all up, how did we actually do? Did we make what one might consider a solid portable gaming build slash streaming build? Well, I guess the answer kind of depends on your bar. If you are good for 30 FPS low visual experiences for single player and 60 to 100 FPS on some competitive FPS titles, optimized obviously visually for competitive, then sure, we have something that you could actually skip the whole GPU shortage and build this today. However, for me, this is far from what hits the mark of what I would consider a solid portable build or even near the dream that I kind of had when I started this whole experiment. The frame rates are just nowhere near where I want them to be. And given I know what an AMD APU is actually capable of, remember, these are in the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, as well as the Valve Stream Deck, I came away a little disappointed. Now you might be thinking, hey, Roby, just add a GPU if you could get one. And then with this case specifically, you could have something solid and portable. And, and I would agree. But then I would say that why use a 5700G, which is holding me back because more than likely I'd use like a 5600X or a 5900X and pair that with a GPU over something like a Ryzen 7 5700G. Now I am not done with APUs though. 
I know what's coming and I'm excited to see that every time AMD releases these products, we see a nice and solid jump in performance. And I have the hopes that one of these days, being able to carry around a nice and tiny little portable system that fits in my backpack and is capable of quality gaming experience and streaming experience on the go, like I would get with something like an Xbox Series X. It's getting close with the Valve Steam Deck in December, and I am hoping that that means us DIY builders get our hands on something this powerful when regards to these chips for our builds in the near future. In the meantime, I'm just gonna be focusing on getting this build as small as absolutely possible, so when the time comes, I'm ready to upgrade it and make just something portable awesome. Now, all that being said, what did you think of our little experiment? Do you have any desire to have like a small portable system that you can take on the road with you? What are some of the biggest blockers you have with a dream like this? I'd love to know all of that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, hit that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video or we go live right here on Robitech. Now, speaking of live, we have a live show now every Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday starting at 4 p.m. Pacific time. We also have tons of other shows and you should definitely check us out on all of our socials to make sure you get all of the latest information for when we go live for Amazon, on Twitch, on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all of those are incredible places. The other thing that we also have is an incredible community over at Discord at discord.gg slash robytech where you can talk to people about builds, you can get questions about technical things, or you can just sit there and tell dad jokes or any of the other things that our amazing community lets you do. Outside of that, make sure you check us out, robitechstore.com for our latest merch and also amazing tech deals that we're curating every single day. Anyway, guys, we hope you really enjoyed this episode and we're looking forward to seeing you on the next one.